so we nearly got a bit carried away and finished the job without showing you um, the, the other bits, the, the finishing bits of pointing and the, the finished application of pointing and the way that we finished the pointing. So uh, this section of wall we, where we patched in, because this, uh, this vent is going to go back into the property. Uh, so what I presume is with this, with this property, it's been cement pointed. So all that moisture has been locked in the walls. There's, quite, there's a couple of ventilation points in the structure uh, so try, just to try and like get that wet horrible nastiness out of the, the property um, but now we're using lime they're not really needed these vents but we'll put them back in so we took all this area down rebuilt it all uh, and back pointed it with the lime we've, re we've rebuilt it in the lime uh, back pointed it in lime so we back pointed it yesterday so we come back today and we're just going to do the finished application of the um, the mortar. So we are using a one part granny dust, two parts grit sand, one part uh, NHL 3.5. This is a standard mix for us, but obviously depending on what your application is, what your substrate is, your exposure, um, the, the walls exposure, how sunlight you get, uh, you can vary your mix accordingly. So we've soaked same as you saw us doing on the uh, the back pointing. We soaked all our joints on this prior. So this is uh, less suction, but because we applied the mortar yesterday, um, it was sucking a little bit less. There's still some moisture in, uh, in, this, uh, in this mortar. We applied it yesterday. So we'll just show you how we apply it. So we've got this, uh, this uh, pointing hod and a small tool. You'll find with random stone, you're better off with a small tool over a tuck pointer. You can use that, the end of that trowel just to get a, a nice force onto that mortar to compact it right into the joint. So I'm just using the tip of the trowel there and making sure that I'll work both sides of that mortar right into the joint. So that joint is full. I've got no air pockets in there. There's nowhere for any water to get into. The frost can blow it. He's an look a clown. And we'll end up with a wet wall. We don't want that. So this uh, this mortar we're using, uh, because of the clays in it, it will perform better than the original lime putty that uh, was used in the property. It's dried out nicely. There's no reason why this shouldn't, uh, shouldn't last another couple of hundred years, this. What'll happen then, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe we, uh, we'll be living in different situations there. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll be speaking Russian. I don't know, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? A bit of a change. I'm just working it right in with the tip of that trowel. Like so, and then once I've worked it in, I just dress a little bit more mortar there. Then what I do then is just dress the trowel a little bit there. Don't worry about getting your snots over the uh, the side of the stone, because when we uh, once we've got this pointed up, we've got a little bit of uh, pointing that we did yesterday. We'll show you how we finish it up. So normally when I'm dressing up over the new stone, don't forget we've soaked this already, so minimal suction. So I just smear that over what I've pointed up yesterday. Uh, what's already pointed up, sorry. And we've got a nice bond and a blend into that old mortar. So when I come to the end of my stones, I just feather it in, see like I've done there. And there, so when I come over it again with my next next run of mortar, it blends in. We get a nice fusion in them joints of that mortar. So you can, any snots there, you can pull back in. The side of the trowel. So I know, I can feel there that that joint is full of mortar.
tell you what, I'll be glad to get back onto a proper uh, standard scaffold. It's hard work with these uh, these two board wide lifts. Elbow and forehead bangers. So you can use the side of the trowel there in that small joint. Press that up. Should it's blending in. Yeah, let's go, let's work, work up so. Oh yeah, so when you're um when you are pointing your property, you always start from the floor up. And you see a lot of people be starting from the top down. I mean, start wherever you want, start in the middle if you want, it's got nothing to do with me. But I just advise you to start from the bottom up because then each additional uh, application of mortar you put on top, the moisture will be running down through the previous bit that you've pointed up and you're slowing the cure down on that mortar then. Um, because you don't want it going off quick. So if you start pointing at the top, moisture moves down the wall. And that, that mortar at the top of the wall is going to go off way too quick and you're not going to get it curing properly. So, you slow it right down, start at the bottom. By the time you got to the top, all your mortar you've put on the bottom uh, of the structure will be nice and cured. There we are. Keep working that in. Like so. so when you do get them pockets behind, so say if I was a slap dash pedantic pointer and I just did that, look at that vibe behind there. So it's really important that this trowel works this mortar in until you, can, you can't feel any resistance in the mortar there. You know that that joint is packed full of mortar then. Because otherwise it will blow and it'll crack. Moisture will get into the property. And damage it. So there, so we'll just feather that one in. Feather that one in. There. The last of that mortar there. Get a bit more on. So that's there. Uh, that's the consistency of the mortar in the bucket. It's a lot stickier, a lot stiffer really than a cement mortar. A bit like camel muck. If you turned up on a building site and you, you were labouring your med, a cement mix like that for a, um, for a tradesman, you'd probably politely get told to do it again. You want it nice and stiff in here. If it's too wet, <clears throat> through the act of hydrolysis, if there's too much water in this mix, it won't cure properly. It slows down the carbonation of it. So you want it quite stiff. Work that in. Say, don't be scared of uh, getting snots over your storm. Because once that's cured, well, you wow, pigeon. Um, once that's cured, these will scrape off real nice. Use the edge of your hod there just to uh, stop you from uh, dropping any mortar on your on your pile, but on the he's on the lift below. So, that's it, that's all worked in. Blended into the previous joints there. And this last bit here. So these joints are a maximum of an inch deep when we've back pointed them. So we know that this application of the mortar is gonna cure properly. If that were a bit deeper, this particular joint, you probably put some packers in there. We've got quite a sharp granite in this mix doesn't shrink too much and we'll be covering it up once we've put this uh, this finished coat of mortar on 
so it'll be cured nice and slow. I'll be ready to scrape off. Oh, you're right down there. Probably be ready to scrape off tomorrow. Get done then, on to the next job. A little bit shy there, so we'll put some more mortar in there. That's it. Put a little bit more in there. Like so. That's it. There's any bits there uh, of me. That'll do. So that's the application. So let's have a look at the finish of the motor. So where we finish it, we just get the gauge in trowel. Soft brush. soft brush and stiff brush so this section here we've patched this bit in just under the underneath this lintel all this was coming away so we've patched all this in uh filled the filled the, the void behind with um pieces of stone uh, so it's a solid solid structure now so this was applied two three days since can't remember so all we do put some pressure on the end of the gauger just work it across the surface of that mortar. What that does, it scrapes off all this fat. This is the fat, so it's like a lime. And the fines in the mix. So it's scraped. So when we applied the mortar, as you can see on this bit, so that's, uh, that's lime. Um, and the fine bits of sand in the mo in the mortar mixes. So as we work it, the fines come to the surface. If we were to leave these fines, this would definitely crack over time with this, because as you look in there, there's uh, there's the bits of the sharp granite. There's no granite in the fat. So once we scrape all the fat off, we're left with the uniform mix in the wall. Shy with it, get stuck in the end of the gauger. Don't use your granddad's best gauger because that'll disappear in a few weeks when you're doing this. Probably abrasive. You don't need to go to the gym when you're working your lines. Every step at where there's a lot of hard work involved. Get sweat on. This edge of trowel to get right up into the nooks and crannies. So there where the, the uh, last week's mortar came down, you can just gauge it yourself and just blend that in. Because we've used the same mix, we know that this mix is going to go off to the same colour as the previous mortar that we put on the wall. So, so this is called flush pointing, is this? Because between the irises, we're not, we've got a flush, uh, flush mortar. So that means that the, any moisture that gets on the wall, rain, fog, anything, comes off the wall, drips down as fast as possible. So it's on the ground as quick as can be. So, so we've scraped all that off. So what we have to do now is get the, the lighter, dustier stuff off. Let's use the, the soft churn brush to thick a bit off. So it's sat on there. And then with the stiff churn brush, be 
beat it back. Look at the claws coming out there in that granite. So what this does, this compacts that surface layer of uh, fines uh, while still allowing the breathability of the mortar. And it also cleans, let's see if we can find some. It's quite difficult to see today. So on the edge there, you can see them snots. So you just watch what happens when I beat this back. So you can see how snots have been cleaned off the, the iris of the stone. And when you beat, when you compact it back like this, you're increasing the surface area of the uh, of the lime mortar. So when you increase the surface area, so if you can imagine, so like we've just put this mortar on, we've got a flat surface there. Um, so if you imagine on the same same bit on the bit that we just beaten back, it's all over the place. That texture to it, it's like an open texture. It's called. So what that allows the uh, the air to do once it's rained on it. It evaporates. There's a great surface area where the the moisture evaporates from the wall. That's why we always beat uh, beat the mortar back into that open open surface texture, open texture surface rather. All right, so beating that back. So now we should go over it again with the soft brush. What that does is that just polishes the rest of that aggregate in there. Look at that, we've got reds, purples, oranges. How beautiful is that? Very nice. Get rid of all the dust that we've, uh, we've just made on this. A bit of pointing, a bit of walling. So over the next so that's called green hard now now we've um we've scraped that off over the next 30 days that green hard will turn into like a technical set um and then once you get up to about 100 days that mortar will be fully cured and it'll be an active membrane then stopping the moisture getting in but allowing moisture out so so this is all like uh this has been on about a week now is this so when it gets wet you can really see the cores come out of them gra that granite so as it cures over time a lot of these uh a lot of the surface lime wash on these bits of granite will be will be washed off over time and then we'll be left with a beautiful colored mor color mortar so we'll wait for uh the boys at upright to come and take scaffold down we'll come and have a look at the finished job later on a few weeks have passed now and now uh, lime's settled down into what could be its final colour. It will like darker to a creamy sort of colour. I'm really impressed with how this project's come along from how it was to how it's become. Really, really beautiful, like nice effective job and you can't even tell it's been done. So this uh, this property will carry on drying to that technical set now for the next few months and then all that moisture that's locked into that cavity will expel. Uh, lime shall do what it does best. So, so it's nice and dry today, but when the rain comes along, it shows off all that beautiful aggregate, all that beautiful granite dust comes through, all the colours in the lime water will come out. So I'm really happy with how this project has come along, so I hope you've enjoyed it and you've, you've gained a few insights into what we do um, and what the, uh, the benefits of lime are, application, how we finish it. This is just the way that we do it. I'm not saying it's the right way, it's not the wrong way. Uh, but it's been, you know, this has been used for a couple of thousand years. So have a play around, find your own style, and we'll see you on next job.